Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are attending the Yahua Direct webinar. I am Ayana, and let us begin with a word of prayer. Ab Yahua, thank you so very much for this day. Thank you for blessing us with a right mind, understanding, good health, safety, security, our homes, our families, and friends. Thank you for continually blessing us in various many ways that we don't understand or even comprehend. Thank you for allowing us to be forgiven of any sins that we may have committed against you and your word. Ab, I ask if you could please bless us with understanding, with perception, discernment, with knowledge and wisdom of your word, and then with the application to how, how to um, administer and live by it and show other people how to live by it. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. And we ask these things in your Kadush name, Yahua Aloy Yaam, through your son, Yahusha HaMashiach. All right, so let us begin <clears throat> with our statement scripture, which is found in Yahu Kanan, chapter 14, verse 6. Yahusha said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And that word way, the way, is the word direct. It is in Strong's H1870. Here is the um, original Hebrew. Delet resh chet. It's a road figuratively, a course of life or mode of action, adverbally, a journey, a manner, or a pathway. Also, if you look in Maasai, chapter 19, verse 3, you will find in that verse that there was a big commotion in Ephesus about the way. Um, some scriptures will say that way, but is actually the term that followers of Yahusha call themselves they call themselves follower of the way, or Hadarek. All right? And let's continue on with the Hashama, which is rendered the hearing into English. And you can find um, this abbreviated version of the Shema in Debarim, chapter 6, verses 4 through 6. Shmai Yasharal, Yahua Aloyaam. Yahua Akkad. Ahab Yahua Alo Yaam. Labab Nafesh Maad. Dabar Sua Yaum Labab. You shall love Yahua, your Aloha, with all your heart, with all your soul, and everything that is within you or your strength. These words I charge you with this day shall be in your heart. All right, so we have entered into week two of understanding um, the showdown at the temple. And before we get started, I wanted to recommend a couple of other videos. Um, today we will be going over um, last week. Let me back up. Last week we talked about the background and the history of each of the three groups that challenge Yahusha. Um, in the showdown of the temple, which will be found in chapters 22 and 23 of Matith Yahu. Um, but because of um, the, the density of the information that is within these two uh, chapters, um, we've had to break it up. So last week, we talked about the backgrounds in the history of each of the three groups. The three groups being the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians. Um, this week we will be going over chapter 22 and um, the first 14 
uh, verses in chapter 22 talks about the parable of the wedding, the, the wedding that the king is having for his son. And if you look at the video wedding customs in the scriptures, it gets really, really in depth with that parable. I will not be covering that parable today. We'll be going forward from verse 15 on. So if you want to get an in-depth view of the customs that were in that wedding and what they meant, I would suggest that you um, look at the wedding customs in the scriptures. You can find that on the YouTube channel. Also, um, what is happening here is that I'm actually going uh, chapter by chapter. So this week we'll be doing chapter 22, next week chapter 23, and I've already covered chapter 24, which is called The Temple, The Coming of the Messiah, and the End of the Age. So this is another video. Um, if you actually would like to understand what's going on in Scripture within the time sequence, in the sequence that they're written, um, this is another video that um, I would recommend to you. So again, last week we covered the background and the history of each party. This week we are actually going into chapter 22 and we're going to understand and break down what Yahushua said to each party as they challenged his authority. And then next week, um, I know last week I said it was two parts, but um, it is information, it's compact with information within these two chapters and it was way too much to do both this week so next week we will actually be going into chapter 23. Now with that being said let us continue on with the showdown at the temple. So before we actually get into the verses I thought it was just as important to tell, show you where the showdown is taking place as well as uh, what is being said okay so this is the temple this is a layout of the temple and this is the temple proper there are some other outline uh, hallways and things but um, this would be facing east this is the entrance to the temple it would be facing east and this is the court the court of women is what they call it but this is where this showdown is taking place and in chapter 21 we talked about last week Yahusha he enters into Jerusalem as a king he's on a donkey people are crying Hosanna or Hashuna okay or Hashena and um, he's performing miracles he kicked out the money changers um, which the money changers um, which I'll have to make a better diagram but the money changers were actually not necessarily right here, but they were alongside the temple. So this, um, without getting into too much detail, would be where the money changers were at. And he enters into the temple, or the set-apart place, and the court of women is where everyone can be at. The women, men, um, not Gentiles, but people of the nation of Yasserel, okay? So everyone can be here. This is also the area, just to give you a little background, where uh, Yosha sees the widow give her uh, the widow's might into the treasury. And the treasuries, which I didn't have time to draw here, are different boxes. There's 11 different treasury boxes, and then there's two right beside the beautiful gate, which is here. So there would probably be a box here, a box here, and then numerous boxes here numerous boxes here and a couple of here and a couple here all right and he sees these going on well entering into chapter 22 he comes back into the temple the next day and right away the Pharisees and the chief, it says the chief priests the elders and the scribes approach him and they ask him by what authority are you doing these things and whose authority are you are you using okay so that is what's happening and it's in here so Yahusha is here teaching all all of the Yasserel people all the Israelites all the Hebrews whichever term you want to use he's here with his um, disciples with his apostles and he's here teaching openly in the court amongst everyone 
So let's get into it. And we're going to start with uh, verse 15 through 22. And this is where the Herodians approach Yahusha. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to trap him in his words. And they sent him their taught ones with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of Yahuwah in truth. And it does not concern you about anyone, for you are not partial to any man. Then say to us, what do you think? Is it right to pay taxes to Kaiser or not? But knowing their wickedness, Yahusha said, why do you try me, you hypocrites? Show me a coin of the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said, whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Kaiser's. And he said to them, give to Kaiser what is Kaiser's, and to Yahuwah what is Yahuwah's. And having heard, they marveled and left him and went away. Now two things. Again, if you recall last week, the Herodians, let's just go here, are, are priests. They're offshoot sect of the Sadducees, all right? This class of priests, this sect of priests, were originally appointed by Herod the Great. Now, at the time that they're challenging Yahusha, Herod the Great is dead. So it's probably his son or his grandson that is ruler over uh, Yerushalayim in Judea. Um, but this sect of Sadducees actually serve the family line of the Herods, okay? They are married. They're related by marriage, okay? So they are in to the interest of maintaining Herod's ruling over the Yahudi, all right, and over Jerusalem. Because the Herod family is appointed, they're appointed by Rome, by Kaiser, okay, the Herodians also have to look after the interest of Kaiser because that is where the Herods get their power from, okay? So when they approach Yahusha, they approach him in the interests of Herod and in the interest of Rome, which is why they tried to trip him up. They really wanted him to say, well, you know, money belongs to Yahweh or you shouldn't pay taxes. They're trying to trick him into saying something like that so that they can take that back and he would be a, a threat to Rome and obviously he would be a threat to Herod and he could be taken care of that way. All right. But obviously um, it didn't happen. Now what's interesting here is what Yahusha says to them. He asks them, why do you try me? Why do you test me, you hypocrites? And he calls the Herodians hypocrites because they're supposed to be priests for Yasserel, for the Yahudi. They're Yahudis, and they're supposed to be looking after the interests of the Yahudi. Okay? This is why he did not agree with them. He, they pretended to serve the interests of Yasserel, but serve the interests of the Herods and Rome. As part of the chief priests, they didn't even understand scripture. Okay? And they didn't understand, um, they didn't even have an understanding of Yahuwah. And they were only interested in furthering their own power and their own interests and their riches. Okay? So, this testing of this government did not work, all right? This is a plan hatched of men, but behind it is, is Shatan, okay? 
Now remember when Shatan tested Yahusha when he had fasted, he offered him all the governments of the world. And obviously Yahusha did not take that. So now he is using the governments of the world to try and trap Yahusha into saying something wrong. I hope that I'm I'm showing that I'm making that connection clear. Okay. So the Herodians representing the government that was actually offered to Yosha is now trying to trick him so they can entrap him. And it didn't work. So on to the next group, starting with verse 23 through 33. Now we'll be talking about the Sadducees. On that day, Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him, saying, Teacher, Moshe said that if anyone should die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise offspring for his brother. And there were with us seven brothers. And the first died after he had married and having no children, left his wife to his brother. In the same way, the second also, and the third, unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died too. At the resurrection then, whose wife of the seven shall she be? For all had her. And Yahusha answering them, you go astray, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of Yahuwah. For in the resurrection they do not marry, nor are given, are they given in marriage, but are as messengers. Malakiam, Malakiam, or Malakia, messengers of Yahuwah in heaven, or the Shama Yahim. Now, concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by Yahuwah, saying, I am the Eloah of Abraham, and the Eloah, and the Eloah of Yatsak, and the Eloah of ya Yaakob? Yahuwah is not the Eloah of the dead, but of the living. And the crowds heard, and they were astonished at his teaching. Now, the Sadducees, again, if you recall last week, they are the chief priests, okay? High priests, chief priests, okay? They also have the the top offices in the Sanhedrin, which is a, a, a judging, a government body, okay? Kind of sim kind of similar to the Supreme Court, okay? They don't believe that there that the soul can be resurrected. They did not believe in angels. They believed in teaching the whole Tanakh, but they did not believe in the oral teaching the oral law, okay? They were also very liberal and very pagan. A lot of them, even although it's stated in the states and the scriptures not to eat certain things, which is what we know as kosher today, they were known to eat things that were considered unclean because they didn't, they really just didn't follow uh, the scriptures. And these are the high priests. So when Yosha answers them after they pose their scenario to him, he tells them, you go astray. You are going off the path. You are off of the path, the direct, okay? You're going out of the way of Yahuwah. And you don't even know the scriptures or understand the power of Yahuwah. Now, he's talking to high priests. That would be just like, um, let me pick, uh, well, any any head, head pastor, any priest, not knowing or under, having understanding or perception of the scriptures, but you are in a you are in a position 
of being the head of a, of the group and you don't even know what the scriptures are and yet you're supposed to teach it and you're a be, supposed to be a leader of it that's a scathing re rebuke you don't know the scriptures and you don't even you don't even have a relationship with Yahweh. terrible 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 for someone who considers themselves a leader and a priest Who's supposed to direct the rest of the community? Okay. Now, both in the uh, situation with the Herods, let me go back. They called him teacher, and the Sadducees called him teacher. That word that they used in in the Hebrew scriptures, not the Greek ones, is more. That is with vowel pointing. They tell you that that comes from yara, which you can find here in Strong's. And yara means to point out or direct. Now, without vowel pointing, that word is maura, maura. You can find it both in H4175 and H4177. And it is a teacher, and it can mean teaching. But it also means to alter by cutting off, to change or remove. So when you see Yahusha, when they challenge him with these different things, and he shows he responds to them, he's altering, number one, the understanding, the teachings that each one of these groups had. He's cutting it off and he's altering it. So when the Herodians approach him with about the money issue, the tax issue, he cuts them off. That doesn't even belong. Money does not even belong to the kingdom of Yahuwah. Okay, that belongs to man. So he alters that. He cuts that right off. Bam. That doesn't even belong to Yahuwah. You give that what concerns men, you give it to men. What concerns Yahuwah, you give to Yahuwah. All right. When he talks to the Sadducees, and it's clear that they, that their teachings are off. OK, because, number one, they don't even believe in what the scriptures clearly says will happen. They don't even believe in a resurrection. They don't even believe in Malachia or Malach Malachiaim. OK, it's clearly there. And at this time in history, they only have the Tanakh, the Old Testament. So there is clearly instances where there was angels there okay and they don't believe it and they don't understand Yahuwah and they don't understand the scriptures so he also cuts off their understanding then once he addresses their situation here that they put to him and he makes it clear, then he attacks. And he says, concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you? That means you, Levite, head priest, chief priest. Yahweh spoke to you. And he said that he was the Eloa of Abraham, the Eloa of Yashak or Yash Yashak and the Eloah of Ya'akob ya or Ya'akob. Ya'uah is not an Eloah of the dead, but of the living. So he's saying this is something elementary. Ya'uah was speaking to you, body of priests, when he said this. And you don't even understand that, which is why they had nothing else to say. That's how far off the path that that group, the Sadducees, had gone. So he's, he's cutting off 
these um these attacks, these challenges, okay? He's cutting them off. So the problem that Yahusha had with the Sadducees, okay, is that first of all, they were focused on obtaining wealth and political power. That's where their efforts went into. Instead of understanding the scriptures, understanding the word, they spent more time in maintaining their aristocratic lifestyle and their political power and gaining wealth. As priests, he also didn't like that they didn't understand the scriptures and didn't understand the power of Yahua. Okay? He didn't understand why they didn't believe in Malachia. And he didn't like that they did not believe in resurrection of the dead. Okay. Even though in the scriptures, uh, and this is with regard to the Old Testament, there's several where prophets raised up dead people. Okay, several, several. Uh, Malachia or Malachim uh, helped uh, i.e. Uh, Joshua, for one, right off the top of my head. Uh, the situation with Balaam and the donkey, the Tonka donkey and things like that. You know, they didn't even believe that. And it's written in the scriptures. So he had a problem with both groups. Now on to the Pharisee. And we'll start at verse 34 through the end of the chapter, which is verse 46. But when the Pharisees, having heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, were gathered together, and one of them, one learned in the Torah, did question and try him, and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the Torah? And Yahusha said to him, You shall love Yahweh, your Eloah, with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great command, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands hang all the Torah and the prophets. And when the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahusha asked them, saying, What do you think concerning the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, then how does David, Daoud, in the spirit, call him master, saying, Yahuwah said to my master, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool of your feet. If then David calls him master, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. And from that day on, no one was bold enough to ask him any more questions. So, again, we have the third party here, the Pharisees. And if you recall last week, the Pharisees are out of the body of the scribes. Okay. Um, they believed in teaching the Torah only. That's the first five books of Moshe. They believed in the resurrection. They believed in in the uh, angels, but they maintained their in, the, their authority by interpreting the law and rigid religious observances like the feasts, marital contracts, and legal issues. Okay, and they were pretty strict and pretty stern. Okay, now before I go into why what y'all should didn't like about what that party was doing, I'd like to address something here. But, um, just give me one second. All right, sorry about that. Now, there was, um, a, with the infighting between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, um, one of the tactics that each group used against the other was to misinterpret the Ten Commandments. 
So the Pharisees, they took the Ten Commandments, and, and we know that the first one is obviously, you know, Yahweh is your Loa, and not to make any pagan idols. Well, the Pharisees took that first commandment, and they split it into two, okay? And they split it, you know, first one, Yahweh is your Loa, and then they would make the second commandment, you shall not bow down to anything that is under the heavens, that is on the earth, or that is in the sea. Because, and they made that, they split that up because they wanted to point out to the Sadducees who were paganistic, okay, and who were about money and wealth, that they were following idols okay now likewise the sadducees okay because they had the yahweh gave them the ruling the right to rule and be the ruling class over um, yasserel the sadducees in order to attack the pharisees they actually split the ninth commandment um in about covetousness into two and so um you know not coveting you know because they believe that the pharisees wanted their seats of ruling all right so they would split the ninth commandment not coveting your neighbor not coveting what he has not coveting any of his possessions and they made that a pointed mark toward the pharisees because the obviously the pharisees coveted the power that the sadducees had meaning the chief seats you know the money the wealth the um you know the the wealthy class the upper class now so when the Pharisees posed this question, I went into all that, all that background, is because the Pharisee, in a sneaky kind of way, and remember, this was one learned in the Torah, this Pharisee here. So he was not like a Sadducee who didn't understand it, who didn't know. Okay, he's trying to trick Yahusha into citing which one of their commandments is Yahusha going to pick? Is he going to say it's the first commandment and thereby uh, invalidating the Sadducees? Or is he going to say the covet commandment in nine and invalidate the Pharisees? It's a tricky question that he's actually trying to do. And Yahusha doesn't answer in any other anyone's favor. He answers the truth which actually is the Shema. You shall love Yahuwah, your Eloha, with all your Labab, with all your Nefesh, with all your Ma'ad. And the second one is like the first one, love your neighbor as yourself. So that's actually what is going on there. Okay. Now, also, you see that this Pharisee, uh, the Pharisees, they call him teacher too, same word, more that they say comes from this. But as we know, Hebrew actually has a couple meanings. And if, let's go back, I said that it's, the real word is ma'ura, means to alter by cutting off, to change, remove, root word more, ma'ur, which is to alter, but also root word of both, and you see them highlighted here, or, or. Also, and this is not from any teaching or anywhere that I, I uh, looked at. This is just what I personally believe, and you're free to take it or leave it. But I also think that it's my order, my order which is Strong's 3974, and it means light. Aur, which is the root word, is the word aura that we use today. Maur means to be, to light, to be luminous, to be bright. Aur, or aura, is to be or become light, to shine, and that was Yahusha. He was 
light. He was truth. He shows the way. Ha, direct. He illuminated, and I don't want anyone to get that confused with any negative, you know, esoteric group, okay? He lit up the right path, the narrow path. Because as you can see in the discussions with these three groups, they're being tricky. They're trying to get you to go figure out. They're trying to get Yosha to claim a side between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They're trying to get Yahweh to uh, discount the resurrection as the Sadducees did. They're trying to get Yahweh to go against the government. Okay, like the Herodians did. Tricky, tricky, tricky pathway to walk. And it is narrow. As it states in uh, Matthew uh, 7, verses 13 and 14, that the way is narrow, the path is narrow, and the gate is, the gate is narrow and the path is straight. And not many people can get on that path. There's a lot of navigating around these tricky issues that he did and that we have to do today. Now, why Yahusha, what Yahusha did not like about the Pharisees is number one, they elevated the oral law, the supplemental uh, oral tradition above the written law of Yahuwah above the Tanakh, above the Torah, okay? He also didn't like that the Pharisees were vain, okay? They made, here you can see here, their uh, phylacteries, and they made them the bands really wide so they would be noticed. They made the uh, the Teflon, the the phylactery on their head. They made it really broad and big so it's obvious and people would stare at them. They would make long prayers when it came time to fast and they disfigure their face. They made their seat seats, their tassels broad. Look how big that is. Broad and long to show how pious they were. They made sure that they practiced all these outward rituals. Okay hand washing, washing the utensils, the sacrifices. They practiced that to the T, but then they would not practice the true essence of Yahusha scriptures by having love and compassion for their fellow man, being kind. So they concentrated on all the outwardly things, but the thing that counted most, the inside, they neglected. He also did not like that they use the law to swindle property from widows, you know, valuables from people that depended on them to rightly interpret the law. And then they made their fence laws, which in the scriptures you'll see traditions of men. That's what Yahusha says. They made their fence laws higher than Yahuwah's word. Out of the three groups, the Pharisees hounded Yahusha the most, okay? But they were all in cahoots, all in collusion. Um, also, out of the three groups, and I will, I will say this for the Pharisees, Yahusha tells the Yahudi, the crowd, what they tell you to do, do. What they tell you to do according to the word of Yahweh, do it, but don't follow their practices. He doesn't say that about the other two groups, okay? But he does say the, the statutes that they tell you to follow, follow them if it's according to the word of Yahweh. But everything else that you see them doing, making this wide, making a show, you know, don't do what they do, but do what they, what is according to Yahuwah's word. 
All right. Um, so next week we will get into um, chapter 23. That is the seven woes. Um, and that will wrap up this series. Um, but if you, this is being recorded as well as the previous ones. And if you'd like to go and watch it, you can go on YouTube.com. You can use this link, and it'll take you right to the Yahoo Direct channel. Or in the search box, you can just look at Yahoo. You can put in Yahoo Direct. It'll lead you to the channel. If you have any comments or questions or anything, you can contact me by email at yahooadirect at yahoo.com. I am Ayana. And I would like to say at this time, may Yahua abundantly bless you and your family with his Ahab, that's his love, and his Shalom, that's his peace. Um, if there are